Hi, my name is Ashman Shwamanesh. I'm Associate Professor of Medicine in the Division of Neurology at McMaster University and a stroke neurologist and scientist at the Population Health Research Institute in Hamilton, Canada. There's a large unmet need that's being addressed with the Pacific Stroke Trial. Uh, we are targeting patients with non-cardioembolic ischemic stroke. Uh, this subgroup of ischemic stroke patients accounts for 75% uh, of patients who suffer an ischemic stroke. And in uh, 2019, there was about 12 million individuals with stroke worldwide or incident stroke worldwide. Um, at present, despite guideline recommended treatment, there is a substantial risk of stroke recurrence in patients with non cardioembolic ischemic stroke that is above 6% per year. Um, so our aim and, and the importance of the study is to be able to address this unmet large residual risk of stroke recurrence and we're all also using a novel medication that may be able to further reduce this ischemic stroke risk without increasing bleeding, which is of course kind of the uh, offsetting potential harm when you use blood thinning medications in these patients. So the Pacific Stroke Trial was a prospective, randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled, phase two dose-ranging study. Uh, patients with a non-cardioembolic ischemic stroke who presented with it 48 hours of symptom onset were randomized one to one to one to one to three doses of S-indexion, which is a small molecule uh, direct factor 11A inhibitor. And those doses were 10 milligrams, 20 milligrams, and 50 milligrams daily. Uh, and they were compared against placebo. Our primary efficacy outcome was the composite of a recurrent symptomatic ischemic stroke and covert brain infarction on MRI. As a result, all patients all to have had, also had to have had an MRI either prior to randomization or up to 72 hours post-randomization and at end study or six months. Um, the um, eligibility criteria additionally mandated that patients be at least planned to be treated with antiplatelet therapy throughout the duration of trial participation. So this was using us indexion on top of background clinical care antiplatelet therapy. Uh, it's a very important question because that's what's really exciting about factor 11A inhibitors and in particular asyndexion um, is that uh, through direct inhibition of factor 11 there's a potential uh, and very exciting potential to be able to reduce pathologic thrombus formation without increasing the risk of bleeding. And the reason for that is that factor 11 plays a very direct role in amplification of thrombus or thrombus propagation that we think leads to pathological thrombus formation. On the other hand, it has a much lesser or subsidiary role in hemostasis. So you, uh, there is a very strong rationale why these medications may reduce uh, thrombosis without resulting in increase in bleeding. And there's a lot of uh, epidemiologic data in patients who have factor 11 deficiency and so forth that support this. Uh, in addition, for a population of stroke, it is uh, important because we know that patients with ischemic stroke have higher levels of circulating factor 11, and also those who have inherent factor 11 deficiency um, have lower risk of stroke compared to the general population. Um, so, so it makes it a very attractive candidate for optimizing stroke prevention. So our primary analysis did not demonstrate a dose-dependent uh, effect on the composite outcome of recurrent asymptomatic ischemic strokes and covert brain infarcts and MRI. However, this was driven by a lack of effect on covert brain infarcts, which accounted for about 75% of our composite primary outcome. When we look at the more clinically relevant outcome of symptomatic ischemic stroke, there was a suggestion of a 20% relative risk reduction with asyndexia on 50 milligrams uh, relative to placebo. Uh, and this is not reached physical significance, but there was a strong numerical trend there. And then when we looked at the post hoc exploratory outcome of the composite of ischemic stroke in TIA, we did notice a dose dependent effect in reducing this composite outcome with asyndexion, leading to roughly a 35% uh, risk reduction in this outcome with acidexia on 50 milligrams daily versus placebo. And we were also very interested in looking at subgroups of patients that had uh, indication of atherosclerotic disease. And this was based on another trial called the COMPASS trial, where patients who were receiving rivaroxaban uh, with or without aspirin 
uh, actually sorry, the combination of low dose rivaroxaban and aspirin had imp and who had systemic atherosclerotic disease, these patients had improved ischemic stroke reduction with combination therapy or dual pathway inhibition when combining a small dose of an anticoagulant with an antiplatelet agent. Uh, so for this reason, we were really eager to see our uh, effects in patients that had system indication of systemic atherosclerotic disease. And we looked at this in two ways. One, we looked at patients who came into the study and their qualifying stroke met criteria to suggest it was due to large artery atherosclerotic disease. And in these patients, there was a, a larger effect size of a 45% relative risk reduction in, this, in the composite outcome of ischemic stroke in TIA with acindexian 50 milligrams daily versus placebo. And in those that had any indication to have atherosclerotic disease, so they had atherosclerotic disease on vascular imaging of their aortic arch, parotid disease, or intracranial vessels, in those patients, there was actually a very robust 60% relative risk reduction uh, in the composite outcome of ischemic stroke and TIA with the 50 milligram dose versus placebo. Um, and this was all combined with no uh, suggested increase in bleeding. So we did not find a significant increase in our primary safety outcome, which was the composite of major bleeding or clinically relevant non-major bleeding as defined by the International Society of Thrombosis or Hemostasis. I think, well, the take home message is one, of course, this was a phase two study and uh, the results are too preliminary to be uh, implemented in clinical practice at this time. However, very, very exciting uh, results uh, demonstrating uh, potential strong efficacy with uh, asyndexion relative to placebo, particularly the 50 milligrams daily dose for addressing this unmet need of high rate of recurrent stroke in this population, particularly in those with atherosclerotic disease, with, and importantly, without increasing bleeding. So I think these are very promising and exciting results for a subsequent phase three trial uh, to confirm these findings before they're applied to clinical practice. Um, so we're really, of course, excited to um, see if we can confirm these findings in a phase three trial, and we're working towards uh, the development of such a trial.